Healing of the Feet, Emotional Conflict The Feet The feet are the foundation of all the body's stability when we stand upright, ready to walk and enable movement, the undertaking of our projects and paths. Moreover, feet always face forward because we are always stepping towards the next step, the future. Characteristics of the feet Support and stability Cushioning Propulsion Other aspects They connect with the ground, providing direct contact with the earth, with the place where I am. Observing the characteristics or functions of the feet, we can see the same at an emotional level and in terms of unconscious patterns that hinder this part of the body. We have support and stability. Therefore, unprocessed and traumatic feelings related to not feeling supported and stable in the place where I am can destabilize the heel area, which is where we bear weight. The front part of the foot is for propulsion, and the soles of the feet are the shock absorbers, how we withstand movement, our path. Our ability to absorb the impact of each movement. Specific Conflicts Bunions This issue relates to forced redirection, forced channeling, a need for recognition, and insecurity. Let's examine the four scenarios that can occur with bunions. Let's look at examples that help clarify this concept. Forced Redirection It could be a direction or project that we started and it didn't yield results, leading us towards an unwanted direction, and on top of that, we are left with the powerlessness and desire that it should have worked. This would be a correction of direction by force I couldn't achieve this, and I have been redirected. Forced channeling. It could be the deprivation of going down a path due to pressure from a mother, father, or partner, with phrases like, don't you dare go or lean on that. Don't you dare make that person your point of balance because I, your mother, am that. Perhaps these phrases are not spoken aloud but are subconsciously established as assumed truths. It could also be a partner who does not allow your point of emotional meeting and balance to be with friends or other people. It's a, don't go there, stay here, almost forcibly. Need to be considered. Another distinct aspect in some cases of bunions is the following statement I need to be taken into account, and I invade the space of others because I need to be considered since I am not regarded in my own place. This can indicate unhealed emotional wounds regarding siblings who are more considered than we are, and this can also occur in workplaces with colleagues. But it evokes an imperial anger and need that mobilizes a personal space because it is not accepted by me, trying to position myself in another place more favorable and comfortable for me. And the last aspect in some is insecurity. That is, I do not feel prepared and want to seek refuge in others. This refuge in others means that I do not position myself in my freedom of action because I do not feel prepared to stand on my own. And in some cases, it has been observed that the eldest child does not want to be the eldest, represented by the big toe, and does not feel prepared to assume a role that is seen as threatening, and it is as if they delegate their place and want another spot. It can also be a transgenerational inheritance from parents who did not want to hold that function. Calluses and corns. There is a constant need for adaptation to harsh and unpleasant circumstances. It's a shell that allows me to interact in a somewhat arid terrain. For me, the skin is the connection with others, and on the feet, it is the connection with the place where I am, whether it's home, the environment I move through, or my perception of my current life path. Thus, this skin hardens due to the pressure it is subjected to. There is a coldness and a shield against the moment I am passing through because it is an unpleasurable terrain. I simply adapt for survival. Let's consider an example of conflict at my job, I am constantly criticized and pressured, but I must adapt for survival. I must endure where I am. I must endure in this place. Or I hear from my spouse constant unfortunate and undervalued comments about me, but I must endure because I have no other choice. Here in this place I stay, even though it is not a pleasant or comfortable terrain. I have to endure a lot. Calluses arise from the culture of enduring. Another aspect is that thanks to the calluses, I do not get a wound it's my need for protection against pressures that would hurt me much more than I allow myself to feel. Plantar fasciitis. This condition arises from constant wear due to repetitive pressure. Emotionally, it refers to pain in the areas where I can find support, where what sustains me causes harm because I feel irritated by that direct contact. This may represent an emotional conflict of anger and threat towards those who support or help me, such as a partner or a parent. You might be going through a time when you need help from others, but this help causes you to feel threatened and insecure, 
perhaps because there are reproaches or criticisms. You might perceive that the support or help is not neutral and unconditional, making you feel pressured under that situation. For example, a woman divorces and moves in temporarily with her brother, but her brother constantly reproaches her that she should contribute more to the household. She cannot contribute more but feels pressured under the roof that shelters her. This scenario could psychosomatize a predisposition to develop plantar fasciitis. The same could apply in a job that pressures you and endangers your support. It's always a mix of support with danger and pressure, with emotions of helplessness and suppressed anger. Depending on the foot, the perception of how I focus and live the same conflict changes, whether I blame myself more or blame others more, whether the situation is experienced more passively, left, or more actively, right, whether it is a situation I have been involved in, or a situation I have caused to end this way. Left and right do not always indicate father or mother, male or female as a gender, sometimes yes, but often not. Heel spur. An extreme level of plantar fasciitis, with an intense desire for that support instead of pressure. Plantar warts. Plantar warts involve issues of shame, humiliation, and fear of rejection, as well as beliefs of rejection toward things considered dirty and depraved. If these warts appear on the sole of the foot, it has to do with chosen paths that have been severely judged as illicit or dirty, or my current environment has been experienced with shame. However, various factors should be observed to avoid generalizing a common answer that does not apply equally to everyone, because it could be a transgenerational trauma that has been awakened in oneself by reliving a similar situation that an ancestor experienced and that I have judged severely because it seemed undesirable and shameful. Another factor might be the reverse, feeling that I cannot allow myself certain actions because I feel ashamed and dirty. This feeling can be personal or ancestral, and does not necessarily have to involve something sexual, but any action or choice judged as such can be a traumatic abandonment by a parent leaving children without a family. There can be many possibilities, but what these possibilities have in common is the shame, the judgment of something reprehensible and indecent. Thus, the path indicates a forgiveness related to that which has been held with judgment and shameful rejection. If it is transgenerational, one would look for information in the genealogical tree of events of that nature and question those judgments of unforgiveness for what happened. Toe Fractures, Metatarsals Fractures of the toes are very painful and often manifest emotions related to the drive in my life path. Not all cases mean the same thing. Some reflect the emotional conflict of fear of taking my own life path and that this decision separates me from my mother or from the direction I was taught at home. Others reflect situations where roles have been assumed that do not belong to us, and I sustain a weight that is not mine to bear, which I cannot handle, and it ends up breaking my drive in what I wish to pursue. Perhaps I stop propelling myself in something that is part of my desires and path, but I do not do so because my duty is to support others. But there is an inconsistency because you sustain something that is not your role at the expense of renouncing something that is part of you. Another aspect of this fracture is having or coming from a family with strict beliefs about how one should live or direct one's own life, where an internal emotional conflict is generated that is not properly channeled. On one hand, there is the desire and drive, but on the other hand, there are impediments and fragility. The lesson here is how I perceive these strict beliefs and how I stop feeling pressured by them. It is a path of being oneself without guilt. Every lesson and healing leads to the deserving of love and the absence of guilt. Cold feet. Cold feet are triggered by an underlying feeling of distrust with my home I cannot express my true feelings in my own home where I walk and live. I do not allow myself to open up emotionally where I am, feeling distrust and a lack of emotional warmth. However, the transgenerational aspect must be considered because often from a very young age we can suffer from cold feet, and looking at the history from when we were small, or the wounds of our parents in their own childhood due to a lack of warmth, or lack of a welcoming home due to migrations or constant searches for a home. There are many aspects that could be observed not only our own but also emotional inheritance, as a footprint of transgenerational experiences. Achilles Heel the Achilles heel is related to strength and determination. Here indeed arises the impulse and the strength to jump, to embark on our path. But there is a rupture, a root impediment that disables your impulse, a refusal to start. There is an underlying feeling of not being able to take that step, 
feeling incapable or should not take it. Here we also observe not only our fears or personal blockages but also the transgenerational history related to traumas of project initiations that have failed, or prohibitions of life projects with feelings of guilt, accommodations to situations that did not allow advancement. This information in the genealogical tree can lead to many possible situations. The issue for those experiencing a problem in the Achilles heel is that they must evaluate and question their impediments when it comes to starting or emancipating from a situation, feeling that they are capable of making a leap beyond. And forgive any familial inherited fear regarding unprocessed experiences of lack of initiative, or that due to an initiative a traumatic event occurred where the belief was recorded that it is better not to try to propel oneself because it is something negative. This is the belief that needs to be healed, which was recorded by an unhealed and unprocessed experience. Furthermore, an inquiry could be made into the family beliefs about trusting in decisions, how they view having projects, what judgments they have regarding this. Blocked arteries in the feet. The love or approval of our life choice does not reach us. There is disapproval, a refusal to receive approval, not receiving financial help, a warning that choosing a certain path means losing my love. There could be a transgenerational issue of conditional love. This might be reflected in statements like if you go where I want, then you will have my love otherwise, you will not. What to do in this situation? Do not believe in these conditions and do not fear losing the favor of others, or being disapproved of. At the same time, do not do the same to others because sometimes we project onto our descendants what has been done to us, and we either do the same or swing to the opposite extreme. The task will be to forgive and stop believing that this conditioning is real. The artery is often the connection with the parents because they are the main channels of our life, so we will observe to what extent we have a conflict in being ourselves unconditionally. For example if you make those decisions, you will be left without an inheritance and dispossessed. This would be a case of conditioning associated with decisions. There are other topics I haven't touched on, such as the problem with flat feet, or having a high arch, what each toe means, but all in due time will be approached from various aspects, including Chinese medicine and other Eastern perspectives. Until next time, it's been a pleasure to share and delve into these aspects.